Mary Met, virtual traveller, and welcome to Stories of the Sun, a limited episode podcast created as a companion to the book Stories of the Sun, published by the History Press and written by me, Dawn Nelson, an author and professional storyteller. The idea for this book began when I challenged myself to get up once a month over the year to watch the sunrise in order to reconnect with the sun and its stories. Throughout the eight episodes, I will include some snippets of audio that I recorded especially for this podcast. As soon as we discovered we could make marks on the land, we have been recording our history and stories. Whether it be in the first cave paintings 40,000 years ago, or through the ornate illuminated manuscripts of the first monasteries, we like to chronicle it. In March's chapter, I mentioned Bede and his book The Reckoning of Time, and so for this episode, I'm doing a whistle-stop tour of some of the most famous recorders and history takers. But first, grab yourself a cuppa, find a comfy spot, and come with me now to my sit spot on the hill. There's a wren saying a hearty good morning. It's getting much lighter now. We're almost at civil twilight. I cross the road, start to begin my journey up through the snicket under the trees, back onto the muddy path between the houses. Walking along the narrow muddy path beneath trees which will take me up to the top of the field where I'll be able to see the sun coming up. Still have about half an hour before sunrise. The owl's still calling. That's the tawnies. <laughs> Some annoyed blackbirds walking past the little paddock. Normally has a lot of rabbits in it. There's a thick frost on the ground this morning. I can't see them yet. Oh no, there's one. Just a little less clearer in this grey light. You can see the moon setting behind the trees where I sit. Opposite it, the sun will rise shortly. It's 6.30. Sunrise is due in about half an hour. The first named person to record poetry, prayers and rituals was thought to be a Sumerian princess named Enheduanna. That's right, she was a woman. Her most famous work is the Exaltation of Inanna, and that's an underworld goddess. It's thought that she was around circa 2334 and 2279 BCE, that's before the Common Era. As a result, N. Heduana is thought to be the world's first named author. She was a poet and a priestess who lived in Mesopotamia, and her name in Sumerian means ornament of heaven. She was a priestess associated with the Sumerian goddess Nana Suen. Her work was mainly hymns that would have been used and sung in temples at the time. Her father was Sargon the Great, one of the first rulers of the Akkadian Empire during the 24th and 23rd centuries BCE. Enheduanna was also a great politician, and through her poems she demonstrated to Sumerians and Akkadians that some of their deities shared many of the same traits, and this united the two groups and helped to bring peace during her father's reign. Skip forward several thousands of years, and next up I'd like to mention Gaius Plinius Secundus, aka Pliny the Elder, and what a guy he was. A Roman scholar, Pliny is described as a naturalist, philosopher and author. 
His writings are on occasion truly insightful and in other cases highly amusing. Sorry, Pliny, if you're listening, but boy, did you get it wrong sometimes. And that's the thing about chronicles or indeed any writing. They are written within the context and culture of the time. A lot of what Pliny was writing is what we might now consider to be folklore and conjecture. But at the time, Pliny was a highly respected member of the Roman army. And whilst his work wasn't always rigorous in terms of science and may in fact be responsible for some misunderstanding and prejudices at the time, his most famous work, Natural History, became the framework for encyclopedic writings across the world. We then had a bit of a gap which has in the past been called the Dark Ages. But if you call it that now, you will surely have historians shaking their heads, wagging their fingers and tutting at you. There was a lot going on between the Romans leaving Britain and the Christian church establishing itself to tame pagan invaders. I should know, I hang around with a group of reenactors called Herigus Hundas, who represent this migration period. And you can find us at several shows across the southeast of England. And so I strongly suspect... Rather than it being a dark age of ignorance, they were just too busy to write anything down. Bede, the chap mentioned in chapter 3 of Stories of the Sun, was around during the 7th century, which is towards the end of this period that I'm talking about, and he hailed from Northumbria. He is sometimes referred to as the father of English history, thanks to his defining work, Ecclesiastical History of the English People. It is his work, The Reckoning of Time, that I mention in Stories of the Sun, And as you might expect of a monk, he was passionate about his faith. However, he was also very interested in the calendar and how we measure the passing of time, albeit in order to mark the Christian festivals and to create a Christian calendar. Let's hop on another couple hundred years. And during the 9th century, in the reign of Alfred the Great, around 871 to 899, resulted in the recording of the Anglo-Saxon Chronicles. These took the form of a chronological record of events during the Anglo-Saxon occupation of Britain, according to Alfred, that is. We do not have Alfred's original version of this manuscript, but thanks to his commissioning of several copies so that it may be distributed to monasteries across the land and copied again, we have nine in existence, dating from the late 9th century onwards. So yet again, it is monks we have to thank for our understanding of the history during this period of time. And Alfred, obviously. The veracity of the reporting of these events through the chronicles is circumspect, though. For example, the great warriors Hengus and Horsa, who are mentioned in the chronicles as being leaders of the Saxon war bands that arrived in Britain at the behest of the Romans, may in fact be mythological and the stuff of legend, in much the same way as King Arthur has become. This theory has been proffered because their names translate as gelding and horse, suggesting they were perhaps not actually real people, but instead simply legendary figureheads placed at the front of these marauding groups. The mounted warriors who led them into battle, if you like. Hence, gelding and horse. They may well have existed, but just not in the way that the chronicles recorded it. Of course, may never really know, but the Anglo-Saxon chronicles are probably the closest we're going to get to any kind of record of the early migration period of Saxon occupation. Next up, in the 11th century, Geoffrey of Monmouth wrote Historia Regum Britannae, the history of the kings of Britain. He's another religious cleric with a passion for recording, and Geoffrey, as you might expect from his full title, hailed from Monmouth in Wales. We have Geoffrey to thank for much of our knowledge of the Arthurian legends. However, his history of the kings of Britain starts with Brutus of Troy. He works his way through history, focusing on, yes, you've guessed it, the kings of Britain. And with Geoffrey's work, we are again walking the fine line between fact and fiction. Marie de France is a 12th century poet credited with writing poetry on the theme of love and magic. And she wrote Lay, which are short tales particular to France, and they vary greatly in length. A highly educated woman, she wrote in French, Latin and Middle English, and she is thought to have written some of her work in England. She is said to have established chivalric writing, which is a style of stories you might find in the Arthurian legend, and her work is thought to have influenced Geoffrey Chaucer himself. Marie de France's real name is not known, but using her work as evidence, it is thought that she is most likely associated with the court of Henry II, and many of her poetic works have women as strong central characters, and this made them popular with people from all walks of life. Her work is presented more as poetry and legends, but there may be some truths of courtly life within it. In this short podcast, I have by no means done justice to any one of these works. They are essentially someone's lifetime of study and meticulous work, but most are readily available to us in more modern print form, should you wish to take a closer look yourself. 
All these writers had a fundamental part to play in the way we think about and understand our history and culture. They in turn were influenced by the thinking of the day. Their faith and their culture and their work went unchallenged for hundreds of years. It would be another 200 years before Johannes Gutenberg invented the printing press. But that, my friends, is a story for another day, and one I shall no doubt explore in The Little History of Storytelling, which is the next book I've been commissioned to write by the History Press. Take a look at the March chapter in the book to discover more about Bede's reckoning of time. The stories that accompany June's chapter hold one of the stories recorded by Geoffrey of Monmouth, and August's chapter briefly looks at the chronicles, or as they are better known, the codices of the Mexica people, or as we know them, the Aztecs, which were recorded during the Spanish colonisation, and hold the stories and history of the Mexica people. Thanks for joining me for this episode. As always, reviews are enormously helpful. So if you enjoyed this podcast, please leave me a review either on Apple iTunes or via my Facebook. Both are very welcome and really help these stories to travel out into the world and connect with new souls. Stories of the Sun is now available to buy in bookshops. And for more folklore and stories, you can subscribe to my Substack newsletter. Just hop over to the Substack site and search for Keridwin's Cauldron or use the link in the show notes. You can upgrade to paid for just £5 a month for an extra dose of wild storytelling to your inbox which includes podcast extras for Stories from Law, my other podcast, and Stories of the Sun. Signing up as a paid or freed subscriber is much appreciated and helps to support the podcasts and my work with Folklore and Story. Podcast extras for Stories of the Sun include a full, uninterrupted version of the audio for The Sunrise featured at the beginning of this podcast, behind the scenes, journaling activities and extra stories. You can find me on Instagram as at dd underscore storyteller on Facebook as Dee Dee Storyteller and via Substack as Keridan's Cauldron. I hope to see you there as I'd love to tell you another story. I'll see you next time. Toodle pip. <laughs>